Thank you very much, uh, Mason, for leading those songs, and uh, thank you, John, for reading the Scripture, and thank you, uh, Brother Jerry, for leading us in that prayer tonight. We're glad that you're here tonight. Um, this is our care group week, and I know there was one group that met at the building today at lunch, and we enjoyed having lunch with that group, and uh, I know that there are others that are meeting tonight, and I've been asked uh, over the course of the years that we've had care groups and Brothers Keepers groups and other uh, groups like this to try to abbreviate the service on Sunday night of care group, and so I'm going to do my best to try to, uh, uh, to get through this material that we're studying tonight from Luke chapter 14. We're in the section of Scripture that deals with um, Jesus telling a lot of parables, and of course, uh, you remember that a parable is, is really a story that Jesus tells. Uh, that he, uh, he tells it about an event or about a circumstance uh, that has something to do with what goes on on the earth, but he applies it and gives it a, a meaning that is spiritual in nature. And that's really what a parable is. It's a, an earthly uh, story that has a spiritual or heavenly um, um, connotation to it. And so Jesus uh, does that, and, and, and oftentimes he would tell parables about... Uh, about things and about people so that the people who were living then would understand. And so he'll talk about a farmer and he'll talk about a merchant and he'll talk about um, um, a banquet. He'll talk about wedding feast and, and uh, he'll talk about parents and children. As we'll see in uh, chapter 15, he'll talk about shepherds and sheep. And so he talks about um, things and people that the people who were living then would be very aware of. And if Jesus were living today and he were telling us parables, uh, he would continue to apply spiritual uh, truths to what he was telling us, but he would probably talk to us in ways that, that we might be able to understand better, in events and circumstances and things that, that we might um, be aware of. And this particular parable in Luke chapter 14 has, is called the parable of the great banquet. And um, we're going to look at this tonight, and, and I want you to, I just want to mention, have you noticed how much the Bible talks about eating? Uh, how, how many of the, the stories and the events in Scripture uh, surround a meal? Um, as a matter of fact, the Bible speaks of, of meals and foods uh, more than a thousand times on the pages of the Bible. Just the word feast itself and um, words similar to the word feast appear more than 180 times in Scripture. So the Bible has a lot to, to say about uh, food and feasting and fellowship and, and friendship. And aren't you glad? Because uh, we like that too, right? We like to eat. Um, um, we, we enjoy being together, enjoy fellowship with one another. And um, I read recently a guy was talking about how you could compare human history to, the, to a course of meals. He said, everything went bad in the garden when Adam and Eve ate a meal without God. Uh, that's when things began to go bad. And later on, God's people eat a meal with God, and they called it the Passover. They remembered how God had, had um, covered their sins and passed over their sins. And this led to the coming of Jesus, um, who frequently eats meals and talks about eating meals with people. And we see it repeatedly in the book of Luke that God becomes a man, and a lot of his time is spent uh, uh, with friends and people who are not his friends, enjoying meals. Uh, and it leads us up to Jesus' teaching uh, tonight that will culminate in something called the Last Supper. And that's when Jesus sits down at a banquet feast with his apostles, and uh, he talks to them about the coming of the kingdom, and he talks about how uh, he has establishes his communion um, for us to enjoy every time we get together on Sundays, and uh, he reminds them that he will eat this meal with them again in his kingdom. And remember, Jesus said those words. He said, I will not uh, eat of this again until I eat it with you uh, in the kingdom. And so, uh, even after his resurrection, Jesus uh, finds his apostles, and he has a, a breakfast meal with them, and he, he continues to spend time with family and friends. And in Revelation chapter 19, at the end of, of the human history, there's going to be this magnificent uh, feast, this banquet. Uh, and, and we will gather around as we sing sometimes the banquet table of love, and we will enjoy 
of feasting together throughout eternity. And so, in this particular chapter, he, he ta- he, listen to these words. He said also to the man who had invited him, and this is kind of in the middle of this parable, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite just your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. And so he's saying, when, when you're going to have a meal and you're going to have a feast, don't just invite people who can repay you. Don't just invite people who can, who can take care of you. Um, but he goes on to say, when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because these people cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now, what is Jesus saying here? He's saying in the context of a meal in comparing uh, our association with other people, when you have a meal, don't just invite people that uh, can return favor to you. Don't just invite people that can do something for you, but you invite people who don't have the ability to do that and don't worry about being repaid because you will be repaid in, uh, in eternity. And so, in Matthew 25, when Jesus is talking about um, the judgment scene, Jesus says that if you give a cup of cold water in my name, it will not lose its reward. Jesus talked about, um, remember he talked about visiting the sick or in prison. He talked about feeding the poor. He talked about taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. So Jesus was always concerned about people who did not have the ability or the capability of doing something uh, good for him in return. And um, remember when John was in prison and um, he sent one of his disciples to Jesus and he said, uh, you, uh, you ask him if he really is the one who should come or should we look for somebody else? And Jesus said, you tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and the disenfranchised have the gospel preached to them. So the point of all of this is that Jesus is saying, look, The kingdom of God, I want the kingdom of God to be a place where everybody is welcome to sit at the table. I want the kingdom of God to be a place where people who who don't, uh, in in and of themselves, have the ability and the capability to make, um, uh, to to repay you. Um, They don't have the ability to, uh, to make a great contribution. I want everybody to have the opportunity to sit at the table. And uh, so what Jesus does is, um, if you look at verse 15 in chapter 14, he says, when one of those who were reclining at the table with him heard this, he said to him, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Um, Verse 16 says, But he said to him, a man was giving a big dinner, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour, he sent his slave to to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is ready. Now, here's what's happening. Jesus is talking about the fact that I want everybody to be able to sit at the table in the kingdom. I want everybody to have an opportunity. And Jesus says, let me tell you the story about this man who who invited many people to to the dinner hour, Uh, He said, everything is ready, but look at verse 18, what happened? They began to make excuses. So, the big picture here is that Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God is open to everyone. Everybody has an opportunity, should have an opportunity to come to the kingdom of God. I want everybody to be invited. And so, Um, 2 Peter 3 says, the Lord is not slow concerning his promises as men count slowness, but he's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God said, I want you to, Jesus said, I want you to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want all nations to hear the gospel. But the truth is, there are a lot of people who who are invited who just don't show up. There are a lot of no-shows. And these people began if in verse 18, uh, notice what happened. They began to, to give excuses. Um, they began to make excuses. The first one said, I bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please excuse me. 
Now, I don't understand all of this kind of language about buying a field, and, and uh, the, I think the idea is I, I need to go out and I need to um, survey it, and I need to, to make sure everything is okay, and apparently people would buy land in those days sight unseen. They wouldn't even see it. So he says, I've got an important job here. I bought this field. I need to go out and, and see it, so will you please uh, excuse me? Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I need to examine them. Uh, one, some translation says, I need to test them, so will you please excuse me? And I love the third one. The third one said, um, I have married a wife, and did you notice how Jesus changes the wording? The first one said, uh, I bought a field, I need to go look at it, would you please excuse me? The second one says, I bought five yoke of oxen, I need to examine them, would you please excuse me? The third one said, I married a wife, I cannot come. <laughs> uh, not will you please excuse me, but I know I can't be there. Uh, and, and I want to suggest to you that when it comes to the kingdom, uh, one of the things that Jesus is going to say is that all of these are, uh, are bad excuses. They're lame excuses. And um, uh, this third one um, is just really maybe the lamest of all because we're talking about a banquet here. We're talking about a feast. And everybody knows that, that um, our wives love to get dressed up and go to a feast, right? He could have brought her with him. Um, but here's the big idea. The invitation, Jesus says, has gone out to all of you. The inv invitation is available to everyone. You are invited to come to the feast with Jesus. We sing a song sometimes that says, all things are ready, come to the feast. Come for the table now is spread. You see, God has made the table ready. God is ready, everything is ready, and he wants everybody to have the opportunity to come uh, to the feast. The question is, uh, will we make excuses or will we come and celebrate the feast that Jesus has made possible? What kind of excuses do we give today um, to keep us from moving toward Jesus? What kind of excuses might we give in our own life to keep us from moving uh, toward the kingdom? This is about every parable that Jesus told. Every parable has something to do with the kingdom. And it's always about getting people to the kingdom. It's about moving people to the kingdom. And, and what I want all of us to understand as people who are a part of the kingdom, it is our primary obligation to do everything that we possibly can to get other people to the kingdom, to bring people to the feast, to invite people to the banquet. And some will give excuses and some will not show up. There will be a lot of no-shows. There will be a lot of people who are invited and they won't come. And so the slave, notice verse 21, comes back to the master and, and the head of the household becomes angry, and he says to his slave, he, he's angry because, because the people, many of the people he has invited refuse to come. And he says to the slave, go out at once into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring here the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And the slave says, master, what you have commanded has been done, and there is still room. And the master said to the slave, go out into the highways along the hedges and compel them to come in so that, in my, ha so that my house may uh, be filled. The invitation of Jesus is exceedingly generous. The invitation of Jesus is for everyone to come to the kingdom. The invitation is for everyone to come to the feast. Anyone who really responds to the invitation of Jesus to come to the feast comes with the understanding, I'm not worthy to be there. I don't have um, anything really that I can contribute to this. I, I, I can't give back what, what I should give back to repay you for what you've done for me. And my hope and my prayer is that none of us will be like the man in this parable, the people in this parable who begin uh, to make excuses 
that we will have a heart and an attitude that says, because we're invited by Jesus, I will be there. And we will be like this servant who, who goes out and we invite others to, to join in the feast. We invite others to come to the banquet. And if we can't find those, then we'll, we'll, we'll get more. Because, listen, listen, folks, as long as the world exists, as long as the world exists, there is still room in the kingdom. There's never a time from now until Jesus comes again that the kingdom doors are closed. There's always room in the kingdom. And so we should always be searching for people. We should always be inviting people. And the most important question is, for each of us, will we come to the feast? Will we be a part of the eternal feast that Christ is making available? Remember, he said to his disciples before he ascended to heaven, before, actually before he was crucified on the cross, as he was thinking about the fact that it would not be long before he would be going away, he said to them, I'm going to go away. But you don't have to, your hearts don't have to be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you and and if I come and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am you might be also. Somebody has well said that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. The question is not, is God ready for us? The question is, are we ready to join the banquet? Are we ready to go to the feast? Are we ready to sit at the table and to sing praises and to worship him forever and ever. If you want to know what heaven is like, you read Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 and you'll get a, a picture of, of all of the saints, all of the, the host of heaven and all of the saints surrounding the throne of God, lifting up their voices in praise to Him, constantly glorifying and honoring Him with everything that they are and everything that they have. So, are you ready for the feast? Are you a part of the kingdom that Jesus has made available? And will you be at that eternal banquet that will take place in that great day? Today was, um, would have been my father's birthday. If he would have lived, he would be 81 years of age. Um, I long to go to heaven to sit down with him and to talk with him and my mother. And I know that there are many of you who could say the same thing about your family members. But most of all, we long to be with Jesus and to see him face to face and to honor and to glorify God throughout eternity. And what Jesus is saying in Luke chapter 14 is that this is what the kingdom is like. This is what the eternal kingdom is like. It is like a banquet feast where people gather together and enjoy each other throughout eternity. Are you prepared? If you're not a Christian tonight, we want to encourage you through faith and repentance and confession and baptism to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you are ready to join the banquet feast, we hope you will do that tonight. If you are a child of God and, and you need prayers of the church family, you see what we are supposed to be about is about caring for one another and about fellowship and, and showing concern for one another. And so we're here tonight to help you in any way that we can and, and we don't look down on anyone but we want to pray for each other and we want to help each other. And if you have any need, if there's anything we can do for you, we invite you to come while we stand together and while we sing.